أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد محمد عبده ورسوله رب الشرح في صدري والسل أمري وحل العقدة من نساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم So the topic of this session is differences of opinion. And the Sheikh did a wonderful job of speaking to us about the differences of opinion in our communities, in our ummah. I want to speak about the differences of opinion that hit us a little bit closer to home. The differences of opinion that hit us in the closest of our relationships, in our marriages, in our relationship with our children, in our relationship with our parents, in our relationship with the closest of friends. When we look to one another and we cannot seem to come to a point of agreement, when we look to one another and we're so focused on being right, we lose sight of what's most important in that relationship. One of the most beautiful verses that addresses the most intimate of all relationships in Islam is the verse that's known as the marriage verse in Surah Al-Rum. Now the beauty in this verse that we often speak about is the element of care and mercy that is focused upon in understanding what cements the marital relationship together. Those elements of mawadda wa rahmah but when we look a little bit above that verse, and when we look a little bit below that verse, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom has given us in five short ayahs in Surah Al-Rum the exact guideline needed to better our relationships, to ensure that when we have differences of opinion, we know how to address them. And I tell you, as someone who spent years of her life studying the field of communication, everything that I've studied in my undergrad years, everything I've studied in my graduate years, and everything I've studied in my doctoral programs is encompassed in these five ayahs. SubhanAllah. Now these five verses, verses 20 to 24 in Surah Al-Rum, all begin beautifully with a reminder as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, listen up. These five verses are important, they're critical, and they hold the key to a successful relationship, whether it is a marital relationship, a relationship between children and their parents, a relationship between two close friends, or a relationship between any individuals who love one another for the sake of Allah. And these verses all begin by beginning with the beautiful words, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And from His signs, from the miraculous signs of Allah. Now what do these five verses guide us towards? What are these miraculous signs of Allah that are encompassed in these verses that can teach us how? to ensure that our relationships are healthy and that our disagreements are rooted in a way that we can maintain that healthy relationship. We look at verse 20, which is the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that He has created us as human beings from different parts of the earth and He has dispersed us. So that we are basharun tantasharun, that throughout the world we've been dispersed. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ is how this verse begins. And from his signs is that you're all very different. Is that you've all been created from different parts of the earth and you are going to have differences of opinion. And so what we often talk about as having a different worldview, a different perspective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I know that you are different. And you will think differently and you will speak differently and you will act differently. And yet the verse that follows, that verse 21, again begins, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And from His heavenly signs, is that He has created among you mates, so that you may dwell in tranquility, 
And that tranquility will come from where? From connecting with one another with care and mercy, with mawadda wa rahma. But now here's the most beautiful part, that often when we talk about this verse, we tend to forget to look to the very end. Where the next four verses, verses 21 to 24 of Surah Al-Rum, all end with ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ It is a reminder again. Therefore, these are signs لِكَوْمٍ For people. And in that verse 21, لِكَوْمٍ يَتَفَقَّرُونَ this fact of marriage, this fact that you come together, in it there is a sign for those who think fiqr. Now oftentimes when we talk about a couple and we look at them, we say, oh, you know, they're so cute together. Many times we'll say it to, about the spouse, he's so thoughtful. Or, ah, you know, she made him his favorite meal. She's so thoughtful. Or a friend that we feel close with and we'll say, ah, my friend is so thoughtful. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us at the end of that verse, ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكَوْمٍ يَتَفَقَّرُونَ Because you must be thoughtful in order to overcome those differences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just spoke to us about in the preceding ayah. And so you can't come to that point of exhibiting care and mercy towards one another if you don't think. Because many times in our relationships, we feel like it should just work. If we buy into the narrative that we hear around us, we may question, why is it so hard? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us it requires thought. It requires thinking in order to engage with one another to get to that point of care and mercy. And as we, we continue with the ayahs, we see that in verse 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again of our differences. So verse 20, he tells us, you're different. I've created you from different parts of the earth and you've dispersed. And then he reminds us that I've brought you together as mates. But think, think when you act, think upon these signs. And then again in the verse that follows that, that verse 22, he reminds us again of our differences. اختلافاً في ألسنتكم وألوانكم And I have created you with differences in your tongues and in your colors. And the beautiful ending of that ayah is again a reminder that this is لآياتٍ للعالمين This is a reminder, a sign for those who have ilm, right? So fiqr, the thought, the thinking, and ilm, the knowledge, the knowing. Why? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that you will speak to one another in different tongues, it's not the languages that he's speaking about, the Arabic, the Urdu, the French, the Spanish, but the fact that when we speak to one another, it is our differences in background, our differences in perspective, our differences that make us who we are, that allows us to speak in tongues that are sometimes different, in ways that are sometimes different because they're rooted in our experiences. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in that ayah that the signs here is for those who have ilm, those who know who know that you are coming from a different perspective, who know that there will be a different way of approaching things, who know that when you enter into any relationship that is meant to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your love for one another, you must know that you will be different, that the tongues with which you speak will be different. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in verse 23, and he reminds us that he has made for us the night in which to sleep and the day in which to seek his bounty. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing our lives. You will be busy. There will be times where you will be busy during the day seeking the bounty of Allah and you will be so exhausted at night, all you will want to do is sleep. And then the verse ends. ذَلَكَ لِقَوْمٍ يَسْمَعُونَ 
The verse ends with a reminder of sam'a, to listen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that in that relationship of differences, in that relationship where the tongues can sometimes be hard to understand, do not forget the fiqh, the thought, to be thoughtful, to think. Do not forget the knowledge to know that these differences exist. And do not forget the sam'a, to listen, which is very different than hearing, which is what many of us do in our relationships when we argue, when we fight, when we have a difference of opinion. We hear the other person, but as the other person is speaking, we are already formulating in our mind the response. So the child who says to the mother, but mom, I really want to go to this party. The mom already has a list of 77 reasons why the child cannot go. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that the core of the relationship is to recognize the difference and to move through these processes. And then we enter into that last verse of those five verses that begin with, with وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ in Surah Al-Rum and we see in that last verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the lightning that causes fear that He has sent upon us but in that same verse He also reminds us of the rain that comes with it great blessings and that brings that which is lifeless back to life now you may be thinking why in several verses that remind me of how a relationship can succeed, that give me the tools to best communicate with a loved one. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind me of lightning that I fear and remind me of rain that brings things back to life? And the answer is in again the last segment of that verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, and in this is a sign for those who can reason. Because when the lightning strikes and we're terrified, when we argue with one another, when somebody raises their voice, when you feel like you're at such a distance from one another, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us an analogy, an understanding that despite that lightning that may terrify us, there often comes partnered with it the rain that is full of blessings that will allow that which was lifeless to come back to life if you use your reason. And we see this quite frequently in couples who come to our centers or even in parents and children in their relationships. When couples come to our mar marriage counseling centers and tell us we don't talk anymore, we don't even fight anymore. It is as if there is a complete death in the relationship. But when they say we argue and we argue vehemently, when they say we sometimes yell at each other and we sometimes raise our voices and we sometimes say things that we regret, then we know that that's the lightning. And that with that lightning there can also be the rain that will allow the growth to come back into that relationship, to come back into that marriage dynamic. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that in this moment, we use our reason. And so I mentioned to you earlier on that in these verses in the Qur'an, everything you need to know about communication is essentially captured. And so again, we're reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the guidance to know that we're all different. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that these ayat, these are signs for those who can think, for those who have thought, for those who are thoughtful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the differences in our tongues, the differences in our colors, the differences in how we interact with one another. And this is knowledge, ilm, to seek that knowledge by knowing one another. So the mother who fights with her child frequently, the mother who has a teenager who's, and the, where the mother or the father constantly says she talks back or he talks back, 
This is the point where knowledge must be gained. Knowledge of what is the child trying to say? What is the tongue that the child is using and what is the tongue that the parent is using? For the husband and wife that feel like there is no understanding, for the husband and wife that feel like when they're talking to each other, they are just talking at each other. Seek to gain the knowledge of what that background is. What is going on in your spouse's mind when they indicate agitation or frustration? Where is that buildup coming from? What has happened in the relationship in the past that you may or may not have knowledge of that has colored the way you interact today? But seek that knowledge. The sama, ensuring that you have that ability to listen to one another. Because there is no communication without listening, without truly putting aside the busyness of our days the seeking out whatever it is we're seeking through the day and the falling down exhausted at the night but ensuring that we are making time to listen to one another and not just hear one another and the aql, relying upon the reason knowing that no relationship can work if we don't utilize our reason the aql that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that depends on the fiqr, that depends on the sama, and that depends on the qalb and the ruh. So that when we create a connection between all of these elements, we then begin to understand each other. We then begin to move past our differences and we then begin to connect in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us. In a way that is filled with care and mercy, in a way that brings tranquility into our relationships. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses all of our relationships with that siqina and blesses us all with the ability to strengthen our fiqr, our aql, our sam'a, and our connection to Him through our connection with others. Jazakumallahu khair. As-salamu alaykum.